live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City. We're here for Big Data NYC. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, check the signal from the noise. We're here putting on Big Data NYC, covering Hadoop World Stratacars and all the action happening in New York City. A lot of announcements here at Big Data NYC. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante at wikibon.org, and we're having a live crowd chat at crowdchat.net slash stratacomp. Go there for a spam-free chat. We're putting all the conversations online as well as the videos. I'm joined here with Anker Gupta with Metascale. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you so much. So um, tell us what you guys do, because it's an interesting story. So just mm -hmm. give a quick overview of Metascale, how it came about, and, and its relations to Sears and the whole, whole deal. Sure. Metascale is a big data wholly owned subsidiary of Sears Holdings Corporation, the large retailer, essentially, that you know about. Um, the holding company that's owned Sears, Kmart, Lens, and Kenmore Craftsman, and those uh, iconic brands in US. Uh, we were born out of Sears um, after Sears almost perfected the art of you know, using big data technologies in a large enterprise. Uh, Sears started on its big data journey about four years ago uh, when, as our data size on our side was growing, we needed technologies to be able to better process and analyze that data. And, uh, and as, an, as a legacy company, we are as large an IT shop as you can imagine with every technology that you can think about. So our existing EDW, it could process the data, but it wasn't cost-effective for us. And that's when we started looking at Hadoop as an alternative. Um, four years ago, there were not many enterprises other than the large e-commerce companies, the Facebooks and Google and Yahoo of the world, that were using Hadoop. So it wasn't easy for us. We had to really take a step back, learn the technology, we had to build resources, we had to build capabilities and expertise. Um, took us some time, actually. It was, uh, we had to answer a lot of questions that were not available to, uh, the solutions were not available to us immediately. So we took some time, but then uh, we build those resources, we build capabilities. Fast forward four years down the line now, we have a number of use cases and we are a heavy user of Hadoop and open source big data technologies. So now, as other enterprises are thinking about Hadoop and adopting technology, they're looking for a partner who could provide them that neutral um, platform agnostic advice. And they started coming to Sears and asking those questions. How did you guys go about it? How did you, how did you find your use cases? How did you um, decide on your Hadoop roadmap? So we saw a commercial opportunity and we formed Metascale. And uh, so Metascale is a wholly owned subsidiary of Sears Holdings again. We provide end-to-end uh, -end solution in getting companies started on their big data journey and accelerate that journey so they don't have to go through the pain points that we did uh, 40 years ago. So you came over from the Sears side, is that right? I did, yes. So when, when Eddie Lampert picked up Sears, it was a depressed asset. Eddie Lampert, obviously, uh, one of the best, if arguably not the best investor you know, on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, and. and picked up a depressed asset that had really been beaten down by the likes of Walmart, who was driving data mm -hmm. back in whenever it was, the 80s and 90s. You know, the old beer versus diaper story, the original EDW, um, which now we look at, back at that as like a dinosaur. But nonetheless, uh, is, it, is it true that, that Sears really decided that it would begin to compete and resurrect itself largely with a data-driven agenda? Is that is that what happened? Or, I mean, in addition mm -hmm. to all the other blocking and tackling that you had to do. So how critical was data viewed as part of the Sears turnaround? So uh, if you look at how, how our strategy is and how we are moving forward in today's market, we are becoming more and more digital company. But most importantly, we want to become a member-focused company. So our Shop Your Way Reward program, that's our uh, loyalty program, and we want to make sure that customers who are coming to us, we want to reward them for shopping with Sears. We want to have personal engagement with them. We want to understand how they shop with us, what makes sense for them. So have that relationship with our customer. And part of the digital engagement with our customer, data is, I think, the underlying key factor. So on the business side, it makes a lot of sense. But you have to have a strong IT underlying capability to be able to manage the data, to understand your customer. And I think that's the kind of genesis of uh, uh, for us to be able to connect uh, that's the, the, the underlying technology aspect of for us to be able to connect, become that integrated retailer. So no matter how our customers shop, whether it's online, in-store, mobile, phone, whatever method they choose, we want to be able to connect with them. We want to be able to understand how and what they're shopping and what they would shop based off of their past shopping behavior. 
So having that digital engagement, becoming that integrated retailer, it requires a lot of innovation internally. And that's where I think data, data is a key aspect of this, this overall framework, overall technology uh, roadmap and journey on our side. And the business model is innovative. So you, essentially, if I understand it, you had this capability and said, okay, let's spin it out and mm -hmm. help others, not just help ourselves. It's a wholly owned subsidiary. It's, it's, a, it's still owned 100% by Sears. Yeah, or so not you know, spin, yeah. spin it out. But okay, yeah, so create a wholly owned subsidiary right. that's, uh, that's, that's quasi-autonomous. Mm -hmm. I mean, presume you're, presume you're autonomous. I mean, you're probably not micromanaged by a bunch of Sears guys, right? You've got mm -hmm. your own agenda and P&L and so forth, right? So, so talk about how you're helping customers. What are they asking you? What are they sure. coming to you for? And, and how are you applying the techniques that you learned at Sears to the broader market? The interesting part is, I mean, Hadoop is becoming more and more mainstream. If you, if you see the number of vendors that are out there, it's just growing. The market is getting full of companies that, are, that can provide you that technology, that solution. And I think how we differentiate us, uh, how we differentiate ourselves compared to all others is we bring in that enterprise experience first of all. Um, so taking a step back, Hadoop is a new technology. It's not been there for 20 or 25 years. So there, there is a not, there is a, there's a huge education, education piece involved uh, in, in, in implementing Hadoop. And it's a fairly complex technology. It's nothing, it's nothing that what companies are used to for the last 20, 25 years of using the relational databases. It essentially challenged that thinking of being able to manage and process that large amount of data quickly. Um, so, when and other enterprises, especially large enterprises, are thinking about their Hadoop journey, they want a partner who can give them the view, the view of this overall landscape, what may or may not work for them. And that's where we come in. We bring in this enterprise implementation experience of Hadoop, and no matter what your existing EDW, Enterprise Data Warehouse, may be, you could be a heavy Teradata machine or IBM shop, heavy Teradata shop, IBM shop, or, or for that matter, any other technology that you may have implemented on your side, we can bring in our experience of how Hadoop will fit into your existing uh, landscape. Um, and we can help you identify use cases. And most importantly, we are a vendor neutral, platform agnostic company. So we provide a neutral view. W working with us, you get that enterprise experience, but you do not get logged down to our vendor solution. And uh, you are essentially talking to experts who have done it on their side. So while as much as we are a vendor, we are also a heavy user of our own technology and solutions. So is that what you're finding, that customers uh, or the implementations that you're helping customers with are, are largely adapting Hadoop to their existing infrastructure? Or are you mm -hmm. finding increasingly that people want to start with sort of a green field and, and, and create maybe a, a sandbox and then evolve it into uh, a, a capability and a platform that, that maybe isn't constrained by the existing uh, EDW? Can you sort of mm, compare and contrast that sort of those different approaches? Sure. Um, there are companies that are in different stages of using Hadoop. There are a lot of large enterprises that we talk to that they have heard about Hadoop, but they do not know much about it. They, they, in fact, there are companies that when they do RFP, they come to us and say, can you guys help us build RFP questions? It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great position to be in, but it's, it's very exciting when you think about it. Um, so companies are in, there are various enterprises that are in different level or different stages of using Hadoop. So those that are in initial stages, that are thinking about how big data will help them, they don't even have, and Wikibon, you guys publish a lot on this, and the three reasons that you guys publish that companies fail in implementation of Hadoop are they do not have proper talent, they do not implement it correctly, but most importantly, they do not have use cases. Mm. And that's where... Um, they're guessing. They're guessing. <laughs> they're hoping that, you know, let's do something quickly because there's so much hype about it, right. and hopefully it'll work out. Yeah. And what we suggest is take your time. We suggest you know finding out finding out a couple of use cases that may make sense for you immediately, and we help companies build those use cases. We have built numerous on our side, and we have seen those working. So, depending on a company, what stage they are in, uh, we help them accordingly. So, companies that are in initial stage, we help them build use cases. We help them do a proof of concept. So, we build a small Hadoop cluster for them and help them see whether how how Hadoop will really help them, right? Um, so the, those are the companies, so essentially doing due diligence based off of what they may have in their existing ecosystem and building that roadmap of how Hadoop or, their, or how Hadoop or big data technologies will essentially be able to help them. So it, inc it includes big data, managing big data talent, it includes uh, uh, setting up the infrastructure, it includes data governance as well. So there are multiple aspects to it essentially. And then there are companies who may be big Hadoop shop today because they jumped on the wagon, they, their IT department said, oh sure, we can do it, it's open source, we can you know, put a couple of node cluster and do it for you. And now a couple of months down the line, they come to, uh, as we talk to them and they say, can you guys come in and see if we are efficiently using Hadoop? Because we are not seeing a lot of benefits out of it. So, um, but I'm seeing a lot of momentum in companies that are, they have, 
they really are in the early, early phases and are looking for us to give them that neutral view, the overall landscape of how Hadoop will help them in short term and long term. So, okay, so I get the neutral piece. You guys are, sure. are independent and, and sort of technology agnostic, even though you mm -hmm. know a lot about technology. I want to get back to the use case. So it sounds like with a lot of engagements, you start with helping the customer understand where they should actually apply this, where sure. they're going to get the most bang for the buck, where the risks are maybe you know, low or appropriate. But when I think about, so there's an upfront consulting piece, right? You guys do right. that. But when I think about that, I think of like the big global integrators, like an Accenture or Deloitte or a PwC or an IBM. They have deep, deep domain expertise sure. in virtually every country and every region ar around the world. Yeah. Now, in retail, you guys must have a lot of domain expertise. But Absolutely. So how do you compete outside of, of retail? Are you, are you predominantly in retail? That's got to be kind of weird because you're, you're competitors of mm -hmm. a lot of the customers you're helping. or do you more sort of consult in a, uh, in, a, in a sort of a horizontal cross-industry approach? I wonder if you could talk about that sure. a little bit. Sure. Our solutions are big data solutions. They are industry agnostic. They are location agnostic, essentially. You can implement our solution in uh, or the work we have done to, to, to any industry, for that matter. So we actually, today, is, is where we are. We have clients in pharmaceutical. We have clients in healthcare. We have clients in... Um, in, in financial domain and, but aren't the, and, use and cases, retailer. aren't the use cases industry specific or, or the use cases may be industry specific but underlying the use cases the technology implementation is is similar I mean you have to customize it to those customer and especially if you're talking about healthcare customer then there are various legal guidelines you want to make sure those are met and whatnot but um, the underlying technology is 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 not I think I mean we have done it for several different domains and um, we have not had difficulty that way. So given that, but given that use case is a big gap, because people mm -hmm. that we were talking about before sure. are experimenting, hoping, hope mm -hmm. is for children, I always say. Mm -hmm. um, how do you de-risk that piece of it? Uh, do you maybe work with other consultants, or are you just good at probing the customers? Um, we, we take our time. We always say to our customer, do not you know, just do it because you've heard so much about it, because you think it may work out. We say, take your time, actually help and we help them build use cases. So we have um, we have a pretty uh, detailed methodology that we take our customer through and ask them questions, send them questionnaire and whatnot to be able to find out what are some of the use cases they can they can start with immediately. And then as we learn more about their ecosystem and how you know the governance takes place within an organization, we help build more and more on top of it. So obviously it's not the very first day we'll come in and have a list of 20 use cases that'll work for you, but we'll find some low hanging fruit immediately. Mm -hmm. So. You may have some of your bad jobs may be taking 20, 30 hours to run. You may storage costs may be going high on your side. Some of these use cases that are applicable across the industry, companies may start with that, and then they could become more and more industry specific. So, um, healthcare companies would think about you know how I'm, I'm going to use now that I know Hadoop could uh, keep all my data. Uh, and I've said different layers of data access and whatnot. Now let me put some analysis on top of it. And that analysis could be applicable to our industry. So healthcare guys may be looking at you know, DNA analysis and patient data and whatnot, and financial uh, or, or insurance company may be looking at you know, hazards and catastrophe data and whatnot. So, so there are some obvious ones correct. that you have, I'm sure, are starting to repeat over and over and over. Absolutely. So can, can you maybe give us some examples of, of results that you've seen? Absolutely. Um, so some of the results I'll, 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 I'll share with you. Um, uh, we have seen results in both uh, saving dollars in, in, in your bottom line and also be able to make business decision quickly. So um, we, some of the jobs, uh, so for a client of ours, um, one of their uh, pricing job was taking over 20, 25 hours to run initially on their mainframe systems because the data size was so huge. Um, what we did was we were able to carve out uh, the data in, in an HDFS table on, on Hadoop and be able to move the job to run from mainframe to Hadoop and be able to complete it over 10 times faster. So one, it resulted in a huge saving for a client because now you're not paying those mainframe processing costs or MIPS usage essentially as it is known. Uh, but you'll also be able to take business decision quickly because yeah. now you're not two hours instead No, you're not waiting for a day <laughs> to, to get that job completed. And if that, if that job errors out, that means you pretty much lose a day. So you are able to take business decisions quickly. So we have a numerous uh, use cases like that where um, it's a combination of both immediate dollar saving, but also be able to take better business business decision that helps you, you know, build better customer relationship and generate more revenue ahead. So you always hear um, a lot of the vendors talk about make, we're going to make Hadoop enterprise ready. That's going to be our focus. Y you, in a way, help make Hadoop ready for the enterprise. It is ready for enterprise. Actually. So yeah. So that's my question: <laughs> Is Hadoop ready for the enterprise? It is. I mean, as 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 we have used it for the last several years, we think it is ready. And um, Hadoop, as it comes from Apache, so Hadoop is an ecosystem of technology. It is not uh, a software or you know our technology that you could just download and hope it'll work. 
it's an ecosystem of technology where there are various like Pig Hive, Pig Latin, or Hive, or Scoop, and Zookeeper. So you need to package it to what may make sense. So for when you. you say ready for the enterprise, what do you mean by that? Because some are saying it's not ready. There's a lot of you know availability issues, mm -hmm. failover, uh, compliance. Data. You mentioned data governance. What are some of the things that are ready? You know, all that in your mind's ready. Right yeah, now? I think, and and there are there are companies that have done it for you. So. Um, uh, not sure if I, how much in deep I can speak for uh, for other companies, but Cloudera's distribution of Hadoop is, is enterprise ready, and we we use and promote open source version because we think there is so much development happening in this area that 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 more and more will be seen in moving forward. So we suggest companies to uh, use go for the open source, but the comp companies like Cloudera and Hortonworks has already done the packaging for you, so you that that version is enterprise ready. Um, now you could customize it depending on how you want to give access to it, and data layers, and, and what kind of security you want to implement on top of it, but it is there today. Um, of course, as Yarn and, and Hadoop you know, 2 come out, how does that extend the, the use cases uh, that you'll be able to attack in, in your view, uh, and, and what kind of time frame can we expect to actually see those things begin to generate business value? Um, I, we think that companies have already started adopting or embracing those changes slowly. Uh, however, I, with, with, with continuous development in this area, we're seeing Hadoop becoming more and more powerful, allowing you to uh, be more real-time now, which was a drawback for it, becoming more secure, becoming more enterprise-ready, as we just discussed. Um, you should see use cases sometime in the near future, in the next couple of months. Uh, but at Metascale, we have this. Um, uh, we have the philosophy of, you know, let's let's prove the value of it before just jumping on upgrade for the sake of doing it. And uh, we take time to uh, to test a system internally, test a technology, and see whether what 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 new use cases it's going to accomplish. What is what dif what is it going to do that the previous version was unable to do? So. Um, do not have a specific time frame for you, I would say, but you should see some 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 interesting in, thing in new, near future. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Great story. I mean, it's one of those things where you guys uh, built the practice uh, mm -hmm. because it was in your own use case. Um, final question: Advice for folks out there on the use case because that's a big thing. People want they see the use cases. This is the year where validation is kind of happening here at uh, at Hadoop World uh, and Big Data NYC. So, what's your advice for the folks out there who are who are touching touching some basic mm -hmm. use cases? What should they do? What's your advice? I'll make it short and simple. Hire Metascale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. uh, absolutely. Other yeah, than that, that's, that's uh, a one <laughs> solution. Oh, but, of course, uh, you're going to hire. No, you, no, then. absolutely. So, uh, uh, we we what we tell companies is take your time. You you should look through. Uh, you have to find a trusted partner who can really provide you an overall view of. Uh, what technologies are out there, then who can help you find how Hadoop will fit into your lens, uh, your ecosystem, your landscape. So um, we suggest that companies take time. They should have a combination of both business user and technology fo folks from both business side and technology side come together and essentially do brainstorming. And, and as I said before, we have these uh, innovative set, set of questionnaire and, and, and uh, you know, back and forth discussion with our clients where we try and we, we, we probe deeper with them. And try and find these use cases for them. So um, a, a neutral advisor would be take your time, take a step back, really think how Hadoop will fit into your overall ecosystem, what part of the ecosystem, what are you really trying to accomplish? So see the end results first before you start that journey and try and accomplish that end results. A lot of time we get requests for proof of concepts where success criteria are not very defined. So it's very hard for us to uh, say, if we, even if we save you 50% of the process ignite, is that the success you were looking for? Mm -hmm. Um, and some clients may have maybe have unrealistic expectation that Hadoop will cut the time by 90% or 95%, but that may not happen. So it's important that you take your time, look at the end results, define your success criteria, and start with a few use cases. You may not have everything. In our world, it took us time to find use cases, and we are building more and more of it. We have more and more businesses within Sears that are coming to us and asking for help in this area. Uh, our pricing team is a heavy user of these technologies, but now there are other businesses that are looking for help on their side. So um, that's the same thing we suggest to our client. Find those businesses who can help you. Final comment I want to ask yes, you quickly. Uh, what's your impression of the show? What's your big takeaway this year? Share with the folks out there what's, what's going on here. What's the big takeaway this year uh, at uh, Big Data NYC and Hadoop World? Um, there's, there's a lot of buzz out there. There are a lot of new announcements that are coming out. And uh, we see more and more companies that are interested in knowing more about Hadoop and big data. So we see that it seems like the Hadoop adoption curve, as Vicky, Vicky Bond, you guys pr predicted, uh, uh, seems to be becoming steeper and steeper. And uh, that's exciting. It seems uh, that Hadoop has been here and staying. And 
Um, it's going to grow as we have seen on our side. Time to up the numbers. <laughs> data, data engines being native in Hadoop, on top of Hadoop, inside Hadoop, platform, data platforms, that's all the rage. It's great, great commentary. Thank you very much. Anchor, we appreciate it. Metascale, if you have any needs, go talk to these guys. This is theCUBE. We're bringing you all the top conversations here inside the Cube, live in New York City, right outside the Hilton where Hadoop World and Stratacom is going. This is Big Data NYC. Go to our crowd chat, crowdchat.net slash Stratacomf, and you'll see the conversations we're keeping track of. Um, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.